Welcome, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today as we take a look at the Ring Central Developers Portal. Now, I could not be more excited to talk about the great work uh, that our product team has done, that our engineering team has done, and of course, our, I, I think our marketing team has done with this portal. But one of my goals is that as we go through this, we can look at some of the challenges that we're facing, you know, being a multi-billionaire uh, international company with a multiple product suite and multiple target audiences. So to tell you a little bit more about the Ring Central Developers Portal, we actually have three distinct audiences that we serve. The first, of course, is developers, if you can't tell from the, the Ring Central Developers name. But the second is the non-technical decision makers, or the people who typically purchase Ring Central's technology and then hand it to a developer to say, now that we bought this, we bought this great you know, unified message video phone communication uh, platform, we want to take advantage of the APIs and the integrations, go build something. And of course, the last audience is our ISV partners. And with our ISV partners, we want to have a robust ecosystem of ready to use apps so that anyone can take advantage of Ring Central integrations, whether they're using Salesforce, Zoho, Zendesk, or any other integration out there. And so as you look at the portal, I want you to keep in mind that we're really focusing on three distinct audiences, uh, really trying to help them revolutionize communications. At the same time, if you look at the top tab here, we have two different product suites that we're really promoting on the developer site. We have our uh, office now called our message video phone offering and our contact center offering. Now, because we serve so many distinct audiences, it's really important for us to make sure that we get the message across of what we do. When we first start with the developer portal, one of the challenges we had, uh, and this was about three, four years ago, is we used ambiguous messaging, such as build communications into your workflow. But we didn't really tell our customers, our partners, and developers who came across the uh, developer portal what they could do. And so that's one of the big things that we really focused on initially was very clear, concise messaging. And that means providing a very succinct, very easy to understand experience that allows developers uh, or the non-technical decision makers or the ISVs to navigate where they want to be quickly and easily, whether that's the specific API uh, or to the documentation, SDKs, and tutorials, all which we think are absolutely critical. Now, for the non-technical decision makers and even for the developers who may not be uh, necessarily knowledgeable about certain APIs, we have our API proc pages. And what this means is that they can go to any of our API proc pages on the developer portal. And once they get there, they can scroll down. And we have some things I think are really, really important. Uh, they have the details of what the API does. They can also see the features or what each of these uh, APIs offers in terms of what makes it unique from another company's SMS API. And of course, as we scroll down, other key things. Uh, this is one of the things that we added recently, and I think it's one of the most impactful things that we could have added, which is the code samples. Now a developer can come look at this API and immediately understand how difficult is it for me to implement? How difficult is it for me to use? And by the way, what does it look like in my preferred language of PHP or Java? And of course, with this, uh, we have these quick start guides, which I'll take to you in just a second. Other key things on our product pages, I think, are absolutely vital for any uh, developer portal where you're talking about the products. Again, remember, our APIs are different from our core offering, uh, even though that they're included and built into it, it's still a different experience. So is there pricing or are there costs to using the APIs and making sure those are very clear, as well as any frequently asked questions. Again, we want developers to be able to come to these pages and quickly understand the benefits of the Ring Central platform and how they can use it. One of the really great things, though, is our Quick Start Guides. And we talk about the Quick Start Guides. If you click on Build Your Free Java SMS App, this is going to take you to the Quick Start Guide for building an SMS application in Java. You can see in the URL right here. This is walking through step by step how to you know create an app and get credentials, and whether I'm an existing. Uh, developer uh, with the Ring Central platform or a brand new developer with the Ring Central platform, I can actually click this button. It's going to create the app for me, set up the application for me in terms of giving me my API key or my client ID, my client secret, and walking me through uh, the different flows or permissions I need to have that app work, as well as walk me through how to code the application in my preferred language. In this case, again, create a new Java project, taking advantage of excuse me, the great old project wizard, uh, of course, creating the name and then pulling in the Ring Central SDK. As we go through this again, you can see copy and paste, easy to get started. Our goal is really let any developer get started uh, and build a fully functional SMS app in five minutes or less. You can see the same thing for PHP, where you can use Composer, or if I go to JavaScript, being able to use Node or NPM to install it. 
Now, when we talk about products, the other thing that's really important to us is making sure that we have taken a no-code, low-code, pro-code approach. What that means is we have our APIs or the professional code that any developer can use to build with our uh, platform. We also offer out-of-the-box uh, applications that anyone can use simply by logging in Ring Central, and our low-code solutions where I can create an app and embed a fully functional soft phone in 15 minutes or less. And I can do that simply by clicking get it now and copying and pasting this single line of code. We think this is all crucial as you think about the audiences. And again, remember we have very distinct audiences from non-technical decision makers to developers to ISV partners, but also allowing them to build the way they want and build quickly and efficiently. If a developer has to spend hours implementing your application uh, or implementing your APIs, then the likelihood of them being successful with your platform or expand on your platform significantly diminishes versus if they can quickly and easily integrate capabilities, take advantage of those, and build really just what they need in the time that they have. The second component that we think is absolutely critical is documentation. Uh, and, and documentation may be one of the most important elements of your developer portal. Uh, and so with our documentation, again, we looked at the Gain Started Guide. I'm gonna dig a little bit more into that. But we also have our API reference. Uh, and of course, SDKs, bot frameworks. And for us, SDKs are really a double-edged sword in that offering SDK means the developer has to learn a new really programming language or new API style because they understand how the SDK works. But for us, it'll remove some of the complexity, such as using boundaries with curls for multiple mind types and attachments. We also include case studies and white papers, both for our developers and the non-technical decision makers so that they can understand how they can use the platform and what other companies are doing. But again, I want to go through the documentation because our team has done such an incredible job on the documentation. Uh, and and well, I, I really want to show this off. We look at our documentation, there's several things that are of utmost importance. Again, first is being able to understand where to find information about the different APIs. In this case, if I want to find information on the SMS API, again, I can click on SMS. But over here, you're going to find it's more than just saying, here's the API, here's the call you make, and well, good luck. With it, you're also going to find best practices, saying SMS, uh, our high volume SMS solution, uh, how to manage errors, et cetera. We'll make sure you have all the information there. And we also want this to be a community experience. And that means that we actually allow anyone from the community to contribute to this guide. Now, how that works is they actually contribute through GitHub using Markdown. And then our team reviews it for accuracy to make sure that their changes are correct. And then we'll publish them. And of course, they'll be highlighted as a contributor here. Um, the great thing about this, we look at these different capabilities, is that means if we make mistakes or something's not clear, our developer community can help update and improve the guide uh, very quickly. And we're very grateful that they do so. The second key, of course, is the API reference. And with the API reference, it's really critical not just to provide the information they need to be able to make the API call, but functionally so they can test API calls uh, as well as code samples. So again, if we look at our API here, we can sign in and try and We can actually try it with either a sandbox app or our production credentials uh, that are tied to our account. When I sign in, it'll actually tell me uh, here are the apps, which one do I want to use? And then I can try making the API. But over here, you'll see that I have the exact curl request. I can, again, grab the code snippet. So if I want to use it in PHP or C Sharp or JavaScript, uh, that's available to me. Now, one of the challenges with this is code accuracy because no one wants to you know, have code that's not accurate. Having documentation or code that's not accurate is probably more detrimental to your API hub than providing code in the first place. So uh, our team is actually working behind the scenes so that each of uh, these code snippets is part of a greater code uh, base that's regularly tested to make sure that our code is accurate. As we look at the hub, another key uh, importance of the hub is going to be your community. And at Ring Central, we feel like the developer community is everything uh, to our developer program. That means that we provide multiple mediums for them to uh, communicate with us. They can use Ring Central team messaging to log in and communicate with us via the Ring Central app. They can communicate with us on Twitter. Uh, we, they can communicate with us on our GitHub repositories, Stack Overflow, through our blog, through our dedicated developer forum, and more. Again, the goal is to make sure that our community uh, feels empowered to be uh, in constant contact with us at Ring Central and to be the voice of the Ring Central API platform and program. And again, other ways we do that through events. We have some incredible events happening. Very quickly, I'll go into a couple other elements of our developer portal. Uh, one of my favorite things is our Game Changer program. With our Game Changer program, 
we want to help developers become industry influencers. We want to help them grow their skills. We want them to be the best that you know that they can be. The last thing I'll leave you with here uh, for us that we found to be really really important is support, and that means on the Ring Central Developer uh, Portal you can get support. Uh, not just through our forums, not just through you know, Stack Overflow, but you can actually search uh, numerous uh, documentation, numerous blogs, and of course, forum posts here, or contact our dedicated support team and have them work with you to solve your problems. Uh, again, all this is the, the external aspect of our developer portal, uh, which is key to really making sure developers are successful uh, in everything they do. And for that, we rely on really the developer hierarchy of needs, making sure that we're meeting their needs, whether it's basic uh, documentation enablement, whether it's the community or whether it's education. With that, I hope this was helpful and, and shared more about what we're doing at the Ring Central Developer Portal. And thank you for your time and happy to take your questions. Hi, Mike. Thank you and welcome. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, definitely excited to be here. And uh, I have to admit, I'm, I'm humbled by the incredible three presenters before me uh, and just the, the amazing work they've done with their developer portals. You were um, referring many times in the uh, tour to our team. And does that mean the developer marketing team? So when we look at our developer portal, uh, we actually have a collaborative effort across multiple teams. Um, first off, nothing would be possible without our engineering team who builds out the APIs. Uh, but uh, we have our uh, DevRel team, or our PROC team, that really focuses on the technical documentation uh, and, and some of the more technical onboarding, for example, our developer console and building that out and the developer experience there. And then we have our marketing uh, team, which focuses on uh, messaging, uh, navigation, and the initial user experience before they go in and start building their first app. Uh, so it's really a team effort across engineering product and uh, marketing. Is there a clear owner of the deck portal? There, there, there is. Um, and you know, I think it's something that every company has to figure out because everyone has strengths uh, that they bring to the table. Uh, and, and so for us, the delineation is we look at overall messaging, uh, a very high level user experience of the developer portal, overall navigation, uh, and really that that introduction to how do they find the documentation? Uh, what's that journey to get the documentation? What's that journey to get to their, their first step? Uh, that, that falls under marketing, uh, as well mm -hmm. as community and evangelism aspects. When we look at uh, you know, really the, the onboarding experience, uh, the developer console, uh, the process of building the app, uh, the code samples, the documentation. Uh, for example, we had that button where you, know, you click the button, it creates that app for you. Uh, that's all been done by our product team who's done a fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, and then we have shared responsibilities. You know, while, while we on the marketing side look at the the events and you know, we push the events, uh, we have two great developer evangelists, uh, Paco and Suyash on our uh, product team who uh, you know, are instrumental uh, in going to those events and, and assisting us. Uh, so it, we share a lot of responsibilities, but, but there is clear delineation uh, uh, when it's needed. But again, I, I think it's important to really reinforce that just because someone owns something, and you can see my cat uh, sneaking in the background here, I think, uh, just because somebody owns something doesn't mean that they they own the thought process or they own the ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very collaborative process, which is important because Ring Central is a collaboration company. Mm -hmm. uh, and so while there, while there has to be someone who makes the decisions, it's very much uh, everyone brings ideas to the table and everyone suggests things, and we all work together to, to uh, make what, what, what I think is a, a fantastic developer portal. Mm -hmm. How old is this portal? This or developer how, portal. When was the first one? Let's say it like that way. You know, so this, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a guess because it predates my time. I think this is our original developer portal. Uh, and, and it's about six years old now, uh, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, mm -hmm. Now, th there's pros and cons with that. Uh, we, we've made slight tweaks and slight changes. Uh, for example, navigation's changed, messaging has changed, the community section's new, documentation's been rebuilt. So we, we've been continually building and improving it. Uh, but the portal itself has been about six years old. Mm -hmm. And um, e you implemented many of these improvements, but how do you, how do you plan these iterations? And where does customer feedback come in? Uh, everything we've done has been customer driven, to, to be very honest. Um, I'm going to get myself in trouble really quickly because the team has done such a fantastic job uh, coming in. And I, I've been at Ring Central about four years now. Uh, coming in, the first thing I did was a uh, my own user test where I went through and I tried building an app with us and I tried building a few other apps with different companies. And what we, we found was that the experience was not a good experience. Uh, and, and it you know the time to first app uh, w was too long. 
Uh, and so we've taken, uh, that, that's one of the first things we prioritized is uh, we, we brought in Bern Reese, who is absolutely fantastic uh, in terms of owning our documentation. He completely rebuilt the documentation, but that was prioritized because if, if I couldn't come in uh, with a software engineering background and, and build an app in a timely manner, then that means people who don't have that experience or aren't as experienced or aren't familiar with Bring Central aren't gonna be able to do that. Uh, in, in terms of a community, uh, you know, we, we really rely on a couple of different models. One of those is the developer hierarchy of needs, uh, which basically says that the first thing you have to focus on is, is basic enablement. If, if you don't have documentation or tool that they can use to be successful, then uh, everything you do is kind of wasted because they're not gonna be successful. Uh, you know the, the, second oh, sorry, the second element of that is, is community, making sure you have a strong community so people can get answers on Stack Overflow, get answers on the forum. Because if you don't have a strong community and people ask questions and they just don't get answered, they're going to go somewhere they can get the answer. So to, to answer your question, I'm sorry, rambling here. Everything we've done has been uh, customer driven or uh, coming from customers. And then we prioritize it based on one, what's going to lead to their success and two, how does it fall within the developer hierarchy of needs? Mm -hmm. um, the um, surprise uh, part, the get, be a game changer. Um, where does that come from? And and like did that did that spread up because of uh, of the pandemic, or that's older than that? That is actually older than that. So um, uh, this actually predates uh, my time at Ring Central. Uh, and uh, I think we look at communities. There's two approaches that people take. The first one is. Uh, you look at the existing influencers in the space, and then everybody goes after those existing influencers. Uh, so if you have 100 influencers, you know you have you know 50 companies going after 100 influencers. Maybe you get three, maybe you get four. They get two. In the end, it's usually typically a wash. Um, the demographic that gets overlooked is the people who want to grow their skills, the people who are already fans of your companies, the people who want to become subject matter experts or become the influencers, um, but either they haven't been given the resources or the training, or they don't know where to start. Uh, and that's where the Game Changers program really kind of came from was this idea of let's find a way to one, encourage people to come in initially for fun, uh, but really give them the tools that I wish I had when I was a developer, uh, you know, help them understand the importance of things like networking or growing their skills or education beyond just here's Rank Central, here's our technologies into here's what the communication space is doing. Here's what's, you know, let's talk about WebRTC, let's talk about SMS, let's talk about uh, improving communications at your company overall. Um, so you can really become that subject matter expert. Um, and, and what we found is that while the prizes are great, you know, uh, we, we have prizes um, and there's other talks I do on this. I'm not going to dive too deep into it here. Uh, the real value to our developers is not the prize. The real value is they grew their skills. They got their name out there. They, they you know, uh, built their career based on this. Uh, and we've had people basically say that, you know, I, I joined for the prizes, but honestly, this is the best educational experience I've ever had. And, and that's our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. And as um, as being well in developer marketing, do you see a significant change in what you do daily since 2020? Uh, I know you've I, heard I, this question a billion <laughs> times, but I'm just curious. Um, First of all, I feel like there's no such thing as a day, a month, a year anymore. I'm, I'm constantly looking back going, what what day is it? What month is it? What year is it? Um, it it's definitely changed the way we work. Uh, prior to the pandemic, um, you know, that, that, that terrible word there, uh, we, we did a lot in terms of in-person events and, and being out there in the community. Uh, that transition to online, I think what's changed is it's now more important than ever to prioritize the needs of the developer or prioritize the needs of, of your, your customer uh, and be respectful of their time and meet them in mediums that are that meet their needs. Um, you know, online conferences are not easy to put together and I don't want to diminish them because I, I, you know, I host, uh, we, we have our online conference coming up and I haven't slept in three weeks, it feels like. Um, but because of the pandemic, all you know, online conferences are typically a little bit uh, cheaper uh, than in-person conferences. And so everyone's now doing these online events, these online conferences, and, and you, know, you you run the risk of fatigue. And and so I think like picking on API uh, the docs here, this is such a great event because it's so specific. It's it's to a point you have tremendous speakers, you're, you're respectful of people's time. Um, you know, I think it's really forced us to rethink how, how we engage with them, uh, move to virtual venues, uh, but also take into consideration that uh, that means, you know, 
competing against uh, you know meeting fatigue and uh, event fatigue and and also do they get to come to uh, your Ring Central Connect, uh, which is our upcoming conference, or do they you know uh, spend time working and catching up, or do they go to a different event, or do they uh, you know uh, go to their son's or, or daughter's ball game? Um, and so it's, again, being very respectful of that uh, and meeting them where, where their needs are, and I think that's going to be slightly different for everybody. You're also involved in a lot of hackathons. Um, do you see technical writers at uh, hackathons where you uh, go? Uh, a couple. I, I I wouldn't say that, at least for me, that's been the majority of the participants I've seen. Um, typically, when I run the, the technical writers, uh, there's just one or two groups that they fall into, that I've ran into. This is, again, my personal experience, so uh, this one has a different experience. Um, by, by all means, please share in the chat here. Uh, the first is they're with a company that is out there to talk about their API. The second is that they're there to uh, do kind of research and understand the different APIs and, and get ideas and grow their skills. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, a lot of times what we see at hackathons, it really depends on the hackathon. Uh, but I think the, the largest demographic is usually college students who want to uh, uh, get the resume out there, uh, which is, I think, a great avenue mm -hmm. for uh, hackathons is recruiting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mike.